from the Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City, Missouri, on behalf of the Fifth War Loan Drive, Swan, the new white floating soap, brings you George Burns and Gracie Allen, our guests Dinah Shore, with Felix Mills and his orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. And now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, last week, the Kansas City Chamber of Commerce sent a telegram addressed to Kansas City's favorite singer and intended for Dinah Shore. But by mistake, it was delivered to George Burns. Now, the telegram was an invitation to sing at the opening of the Fifth War Loan Drive. So we now find Mr. and Mrs. George Burns in a compartment on a train approaching Kansas City. Gee, I, I still can't get over it. They picked me as Kansas City's favorite singer. Oh, yes, and this is only the beginning, George. You go from one triumph to another. Broadway musicals, the concert stage, grand opera, and finally, a singing commercial for Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> Do you think they'll like me in Kansas City? Well, of course, darling. Well, you'll be the toast of Missouri. Sugar Throat Burns, the Ozark Lark. <laughs> Oh, Kansas City, here I come. Right. George. Uh, back. George. Uh, where? George. Uh, George. Uh -huh. George. You mustn't tire out those little silver tonsils. Mm, thanks. I wonder if I'll be nervous singing in that big auditorium in front of 12,000 people. Well, of course you won't. Just remember that you're up there to sell war bonds. And not only that, but you're helping to increase Kansas City's beef production. Beef? Uh, beef production? Well, that's what Bill Goodwin said. He said that when those people hear you sing, they're going to raise the biggest beef in history. I, uh, I wonder how he meant that. Of course, dear. What makes this trip even more thrilling is the fact that we were married right here in Kansas City. I know. This will be a second honeymoon for us. Oh, yes. George, let's stop at that same little hotel where we spent our first honeymoon. We'll get the same room. Okay. Everything will be just the same. I even want you to wear that same darling little nightshirt. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'll never forget our wedding night. When you walked out in that nightshirt, <laughs> I thought Mother would die laughing. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. Uh, uh, come in. Hiya, folks. Hello, Bill. Say, look what the baggage man found in your trunk, George. <gasps> Hello. Tootsie Sagwell, what were you doing in my trunk? Well, I, I can explain everything, dear. Um, Tootsie's going to Kansas City to be married. She sent her picture to a man there through the Lonely Hearts Club. <laughs> yes. Uh, see, it was a picture just like this one taken in my strapless evening gown. Hey, Tootsie, that, that's a pretty daring picture. Oh, do you think so? Yes, it shows your face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bill. Pay no attention to him, Tootsie. You're a regular glamour girl. Oh, are you kidding, Gracie? Now, if you want to see a real glamour girl, just step into compartment A in the next car. Yeah, who's there? Dinah Shore. Well, what's Dinah Shore got that Tootsie Sagwell hasn't got? Put them both in bathing suits on a beach, and how would you tell them apart? <laughs> Dinah has a better shoreline. Gracie, let's let's go in and see Dinah. I'd like to tell her about being Kansas City's favorite singer. I... Well, George and Gracie. Hello, Dinah. We just heard that you were on the train. Where are you going? To Kansas City. That's a coincidence. So are we. Oh, good. Say, I hope you'll come and hear me sing at the Bond Rally. I've been chosen Kansas City's favorite singer. Uh... <laughs> no. 
You have? Well, this is a coincidence. George has been chosen Kansas City's favorite singer, too. George? Yes. Oh, well, I guess I'm supposed to be their favorite girl singer, and George is their favorite boy. Um, uh, man. Um, uh, singer of the opposite sex. <laughs> yes, I, I guess so. Say, uh, I don't believe I've ever heard you sing, George. R- really? Well, listen. <laughs> I can't give you anything but love, baby. Oh, oh that man must have a lute and a lyre in him. Oh, Dinah, wasn't that beautiful? Uh, yes, it was magnificent. Oh, <laughs> you're just saying I'm magnificent because you're another singer. Yes, I guess there's a little liar in me, too. <laughs> uh, by the way, Dinah, how is your husband, George Montgomery? Oh, he's just fine, thanks. Say, Gracie, there's another coincidence. You married a man named George, and I married a man named well, George. Well, yeah. You married a big, handsome actor? And you married a man named George. <laughs> Uh, Dinah, uh-huh. uh, maybe we ought to get together on our numbers. Uh, what are you going to sing in Kansas City? Well, I thought the folks might like an old favorite. How about this? I'll get by as long as I have you. Though there be rain. George, you sing something for Dinah. Okay. Oh, Kansas City, here I come. Oh, right, George. A bag. George. Oh, where? George. Hi. George. Uh-huh. Yes. George, we're pulling into Kansas City. All out for Kansas City. There's a big crowd waiting. Oh, wasn't it clever of me, George, the way I sneaked you off the back of the train and into this taxi cab? Yeah. I still don't know why you did it. Oh, didn't you see that mob of young girls at the station? I didn't want those bobby sockers to tear your shirt off like they do Frank Sinatra. (laughs) But, Gracie, they wouldn't think I was Sinatra. Well, they might, with your shirt off. (laughs) I was kind of looking forward to getting mobbed a little. Well, you just wait till tonight. After they've heard you sing, then you'll really get mobbed. You think so? Say, what happened to Tootsie? Oh, well, she's out looking for that lonely hot correspondent of hers. Oh, dear, here's our hotel. Driver, pull right up here. Here you are, driver. Ah, well, Judge, there it is. The same hotel you took me to the day we were married. Yeah, the Packing House Plaza. Rooms, one dollar. She was the rates have doubled since we were here. Well, let's go in and get a room. Oh, oh, wait, George. I'd like to be carried across the threshold, just like I was on our wedding day. Oh, what crazy. Oh, please, George. Maybe you can find the same bellboy who did it then. He's probably in the army. Let's go in. I guess that, uh, that girl is the desk clerk. I'll find out about a room. How do you do? I'd like a room for my wife and myself. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have a single vacancy. Oh, but you just have to accommodate us. After all, I picked this hotel when I married my husband. 
Don't you think you owe me something for that? I'm sorry. We don't rectify mistakes after 30 days. <laughs> Look, I'd like to see the manager. Oh, he's in Wichita. Wichita? Yes, he found a room there. <laughs> Let's go, Gracie. Come on. Oh, gee, I wanted to stop here. Hey, hiya, kids. Uh, Where are you going? Oh, we can't get a room here, Bill. Oh, well, George, I took care of that for you. I knew you'd want to stop here. Yeah, how did you do it? Well, um, you see that cute little desk clerk with the sparkle in her eye? Yeah. Uh, well, her name is Betty Ann, and that sparkle didn't come from eating carrots. <laughs> uh... What kind of room did you talk her out of? Well, uh, I gave her a hug and she offered me a single room. Yeah. I gave her a kiss and she offered me a double room. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the key to the royal suite. Um, <laughs> uh, how did you get that? Well, gave her a bar of swan soap, George. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's swan, the new white floating soap that's four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, for bathing the baby, or for dishes and light laundry. Four swell soaps in one. So all you did to get the royal suite was hand her a bar of swan, huh? Well, uh, tonight we're going to take a little picnic supper out to Swope Park, and after supper we'll stroll over to the lagoon. Yeah, and then what? Well, what do you suppose? We'll put the supper dishes in the lagoon and wash them with swan. <laughs> Gee. I'll show Betty Ann how those long-lasting swan suds make short work of washing dishes even in hard water. And I'll tell her that swan's so mild and gentle, it's not only kind to her hands, but it's wonderful for her complexion, too. Oh, hello. Here you are, George and Gracie. How you, Bill? Hello, Dinah. Well, I'll be seeing you folks in the auditorium. Gracie, uh, Bill told me you were going to stop here, but why this hotel? Why don't you come over to the mule box? Oh, oh no, Dinah. This is our honeymoon hotel. It reminds me of George. But it's so old and broken down and... Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gracie and I were married right here in Kansas City, Diana. Yes, my whole family came to the wedding. And when the preacher said, if there is anyone present who knows why this marriage should not take place, well, you never heard such shouting and screaming in your life? <laughs> Gracie's family didn't exactly approve of me. Oh, Mother cried and cried. Oh, well, all mothers cry at weddings, but mine is still crying. <laughs> I don't think Dinah is interested in our honeymoon talk, Gracie. Well, how can I help but talk about it? This hotel brings it back to my mind so vividly. Remember when the bellboy took us to our room and handed us the key and started to leave? That's when you leaned over and whispered those three little words in my ear. Three little words? Yeah. Tip the boy. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's enough. Dinah and I have to be getting over to the auditorium to rehearse. Dinah, mm -hmm. I think I'll do my opening number with a lot of rhythm. You know, I can't give you anything but love. Oh, baby, Oh, baby, no, 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 darling. No. Oh, dear, no, no. no. Uh, sing it smoothly. You mustn't jerk those delicate tonsils out of position. <laughs> Well, what do you think, Dinah? Well, I agree, George. You did sound pretty jerky. Well, you you two uh, songbirds run along to the auditorium. I'm going over to the Chamber of Commerce and thank the head of the bond rally for inviting us here. <laughs> Oh, uh, how do you do? Are you the head of the Chamber of Commerce? No, I'm not. Oh, well, I, I wanted to see the Chamber Head. <laughs> well, um, are you the head of the Bond Drive? No, I'm the head of the Fat Salvage Drive. Oh, you're the Fat Head. <laughs> well, I'm Mrs. Burns, and I just wanted to thank Kansas City for inviting my husband here. Who is your husband? Sugar Throat Burns. Sugar Throat Burns. Well, Kansas City's favorite singer. See, here's the telegram you sent inviting him to sing at the Bond Rally tonight. Oh, uh, this telegram was intended for Dinah Shore. Your husband must have gotten it by mistake. Oh. Oh, then he... he isn't Kansas City's favorite singer? No. You might try Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> This will break his heart. I, 
I better get him out of town before he finds out. I've looked all over the auditorium. Where's George? In his dressing room. Well, I just found out that he's not Kansas City's favorite singer. Really? Oh, Bill, he won't get over this if he lives to be a hundred. Well, so he'll be unhappy for a couple of years. <laughs> Cheer up, Gracie. Dinah Shore is just getting ready to rehearse that wonderful tune she introduced, Tess's Torch Song. So let's listen, huh? <laughs> I had a man He was a good man That is, you see, what I mean is I thought he was a good man I had a friend She was a good friend I told my friend about my man Cause I thought she was a good friend Life was sweet Didn't I have my man Well, I'm pleased Then the fireworks began Ain't got no man Ain't got no friend I'll bet you can guess Just exactly what happened That was the end The end of my friend The end of my man And darn near the end of me Of me Sing so beautifully, Bill. Yeah. Almost as beautifully as George. And now poor George won't get to sing. See, I'm afraid to tell him. Oh, don't worry, Gracie. He'll get over it. Oh, you don't know, George. When he finds out he's not Kansas City's favorite singer, he might do something desperate. No. Why, he's liable to throw himself under the mayor's car and let the oil out. <laughs> Impetuous boy. The poor darling, he's in his dressing room right now rehearsing. Just listen, Bill. Till that lucky day, you know, Don. Well. Why, if Kansas City could hear that glorious voice, they'd keep him here forever. You think so? Well, if you lived in Kansas City and George sang here, what would you do? I'd make the San Fernando Valley my home. <laughs> well, I gotta be getting out onto the stage. Oh, dear, I hate to tell George his... Face will drop just like his chest did. Oh. <laughs> Gracie, I heard the news about George not singing tonight. Oh, Dinah, maybe you can fix it. Uh, have George put back on the program. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I can't, Gracie. Besides, I wouldn't worry. It's not a matter of life or death. Oh, well, no, I... Yeah. Yeah, yes, it is. That's why you've got to help him. George is in his dressing room right now standing on a chair with a rope around his neck. And if he doesn't sing... You mean he's going to... Oh, yeah, I'll peek in and see if he's all right. Oh, dream a while, scheme a while, you're sure to find. Gee, somebody must have kicked the chair out from under him. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, that was George singing. Well, I never would... Oh, oh, Gracie, here comes Mr. Higginbottom, the man in charge of music tonight. Why don't you speak to him? Oh, uh, Dinah. Yes, Better sir. get on stage. We're ready to start. All right, Mr. Higginbottom. I'll see you later, Gracie. Um, Mr. Higginbottom, wouldn't you like to have Mr. Burns, the famous radio star, on the program tonight? Mr. Burns, is he here? Oh, yes, right in this dressing room. Listen. Happiness and I guess all those things you've always pined for. <laughs> Well, there you are. That's wonderful. And he brought along his bazooka. Oh, oh, no, no. That was George 
Burns. He was singing. He was? Yes. Won't you let him sing on the program tonight, Mr. Higginbottom? I'm afraid I couldn't. Well, couldn't you just let him sing a duet with Dinah Shaw? I'd uh, rather not. But singing seems a much better than soloist. Now, look at the Mary Max. Where would Mary be without Max? <laughs> well... How about it, Mr. Higginbottom? I'm sorry, Mrs. Burns. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must get into my office. Oh, poor Judge. How will I... Gracie! Oh, Gracie, I'm so miserable. Oh, Judge, what happened? It's my Kansas City man. I came all the way from California and I couldn't get him. Well, Tootsie, you should have wired him. I did, but he untied himself and got away. <laughs> I chased him all over Kansas City, but he ran in here and disappeared. I want my Mr. Higginbottom. Higgin... Tootsie, did you call him Higginbottom? Yes, is it a naughty word? <laughs> well, Tootsie, look, you, you wait right here. I, I think George may sing tonight after all. Um, uh, Mr. Higginbottom, um, have you changed your mind about letting my husband sing tonight? No. All right. Sick him, Tootsie. Oh, oh Higgy, come to my arm. No, no, take her away. Help. Yeah, oh, well, does George Burns sing tonight? All right, all right, anything. Just call off this woman. Uh, all right, Tootsie, you wait outside for a minute. All right, oh, he's a cute little rascal. Oh, all right, Mr. Higginbottom, you can come down now off the chandelier. But remember, my husband sings tonight, even if it's only a duet with Dinah Shaw. All right. I'll make an arrangement for you. Oh, me. good. Uh, make it I can't give you anything but love and, and give my husband a juicy part. You know, lots of cadenzas and fortissimos and tassets and all kind of chords. Sure. I'll even give your husband a diminished fit. A diminished fit? <laughs> oh, no. He, he couldn't drink half a pint. <laughs> most you can. Here comes the freedom man asking you to buy a share of freedom today. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you're enjoying our show, and I know that you people here in the auditorium will be proud and happy to learn that the bond which you purchased as your admission here tonight totaled eleven million two hundred eighty three thousand five hundred twenty five dollars. George, Gracie, Dinah, myself, and all of us thank you for letting us help get the fifth war loan off to such a rousing start. How about that, Dinah? You said it, Bill. And I'd like to remind you folks that every bond you bought here tonight is going to make those walls of Fortress Europe come tumbling down a little faster. And the sooner that happens, the sooner our boys will be coming home. Right, Dinah. And remember, folks, every time you buy a war bond, you're buying a hunk of happy future for yourself and your children. So let's all get in there and invest every dollar we can possibly scrape together. And keep backing the attack. Buy more than ever before. And now for the grand finale of our show. George Burns is waiting in the wings to entertain you. So without further ado, I present one of Hollywood's greatest talents, one of the finest artists I have ever worked with, that great entertainer, Mrs. George Burns. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present the musical treat of the century, Mr. Sugarthroat Burns, assisted by Dinah Shaw and Felix Mills in the orchestra. Singing that great torch song, I Can't Give You Anything But Love, Baby. George and Dinah are both great torch singers, but... After listening, I'm sure you'll all agree that my husband is the torture of the two. <laughs> Incidentally, 
This arrangement was made by Kansas City's own musical director, Mr. Higginbottom. Well, here they are, George Burns and Company. <laughs> I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I've plenty of, baby. Dream a while, scheme a while, you're sure to find happiness, and I guess oh. Things you always find for. Gee, I'd like to see you looking swell, baby. Diamond bracelets will work, doesn't sell, baby. Till that lucky day, you know darn well, baby. baby. Baby, 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 bo, 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 baby, 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 baby. Take it. Take it. There's nothing left to take. You take it, Felix. Before we go now, George and Gracie would like to speak to you. All right, Gracie. Thanks, Phil. Ladies and gentlemen, when you listen to the invasion news, it, it makes you feel sort of helpless. Helpless because you realize just what our boys are going through. And all we can do is listen to what is happening. But actually, we can do more than listen. We can help those boys. We can help them by buying war bonds. Because we've all heard so much about war bonds... And we've all bought them before. We're beginning to take war bonds for granted. We're apt to think, let the other fellow buy them. They'll make the quota all right, but the other fellow was you. Don't forget that without the war bonds you bought in the past, there never would have been an invasion. And don't forget that there's plenty of rough going ahead. Don't let the boys down. They're doing one terrific job. Let's buy war bonds with every single penny we can spare. This time, let's really back the attack. Let's buy more than ever before. Our guest, Dinah Shore, is heard every Thursday night over this same network and appeared through the courtesy of Bird's Eye Frosted Foods. Tonight's broadcast, in behalf of the Fifth War Loan Drive, came to you from the Municipal Auditorium in Kansas City and brings to a close the current season for George Burns and Gracie Allen. We'll be off the air for eight weeks, after which the makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, invite you to again listen to George and Gracie and the rest of our cast. Be with us, won't you? This program is broadcast to our servicemen and women all over the world through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. And now, till next August 15th, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I swan, how about you? <laughs> Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles.